Hello, world. Welcome to episode two of Rainbow Road Ramblings. Uh, so, uh, last time we went through and did an initial kind of introductory video. If you want to, you can go back, back and watch that one, but you don't need to because we're sort of going to recap everything today. Uh, before we dig in, I do want to give a shout out to Seagrove. Again, he's the person who put together this list and uh, also the person who's kind of coaching me on it. Uh, he has his own channel, and uh, the link will be in the description, but he has a video up now that is showcasing a unique take on uh, Darkrai EX Dragon build, uh, showcasing some Dragon Air usage that is entirely different than what I've seen in other versions of the deck. So definitely check it out if you're interested in that sort of thing. But if you came here strictly for Rainbow Road, we'll dig into that. I'm going to recap the deck list very quickly. Um, I feel like I went over it in detail last time, but at the same time, I didn't really cover it in the right way. So quick recap. I apologize if this feels repetitive, but I do want to give a, a quick, quick overview that actually does it justice. So, centers around, Xerneas is your attacker uh, with this Rambo Force attack that does 30 damage for each type of Pokemon on your bench. Um, and basically, to increase the types, we have a lot of different ones. Uh, we use Hoopa to get them out fast because we're playing lots of EXs, and we use Skyfield. Where is there it is, uh, as our stadium, to try to hold more Pokemon on our bench. Um, and we use the dual-type Volcanion EX as well to, to get that double shot in there. Um, and that, that's basically what it centers around. Everything is trying to support having Xerneas in the active as an attacker. Um, we have Fighting Fury Belts for some extra HP and a little bit of extra damage. We have a Xerneas Break card that gives, again, a little bit more HP, uh, but also, more importantly, allows you to uh, get around things like Jolteon EX when he locks out basic Pokemon. Xerneas Break can still attack. Um, and uh, we have there, there are different little texts that come with each of these EXs. Like we, we talked about Volcanion EX and his dual typing that boosts our damage a lot. Umbreon gives the ability to discard cards and draw new cards, which can come in handy. Seagrove mentioned in response to one of the questions I asked last week, this can be very key uh, when you're in an item lock situation. Uh, Beedrill gets rid of tools if you're ever facing opponents that their tools are like making the difference. You can send Beedrill up with one energy and he will discard the tools. Maybe that gives you a, a KO on a Dark Rye that has a Fighting Fury Belt on it. Um, and then we've got Genesect that uses his Drive Change ability to sort of hold on to any of your tools, a Floatstone or a Fighting Fury Belt, until you need it. So you don't have to stick it somewhere that it's not needed. Now, obviously Shaman helps with card draw. Hoopa, like I said, helps you get everything out. And then the techs, the, techs, the other cards, are supporting getting your Pokemon out and recovering them. Okay, like I said, quick overview this time. Now I want to move on to actually hitting on the points in the previous video where Seagrove spotted potential mistakes. So we'll start off here at the 12 minute mark. Um, we benched a Shaman because we had very little going on. This was actually the first turn of the game. And then I immediately attached a double colorless energy and then played the Max Elixir. Um, he just wanted to make the note that really we want to play that Max Elixir first. It doesn't always make a difference. In a lot of cases it wouldn't change anything whether it hits or not, but there are situations where it makes all the difference. So we want to make sure we're doing that in the right order. Here we're now going to uh, go ahead and Ninja Boy, as we saw in the previous video. But I think part of his point might have been that if it doesn't hit, we might have preferred to have the energy on Genesect and maybe Ninja Boyd uh, there. Um, and maybe not. It may have worked out just the way it did. The second point he made was actually right here going into the 13 minute mark. Um, so. We went ahead 
and I grabbed, I'm, I'm debating what to grab. We want the Volcanion for the dual typing boost, and then I grabbed Jolteon. I'm taking a long time to click because I, I think in the video I was debating, but I grabbed Jolteon and then uh, another one. And the, the comment he wanted to make is that we really should have left Jolteon in the deck in this case because we have something stuck in the active. If we're not able to retreat it, if we don't find a Floodstone soon enough, uh, we do have a VS Seeker in hand. We could Ninja Boy into Jolteon from Genesect if we leave Jolteon in the deck. So had we done that, that would have been a, an additional out. So the next spot was about play order again, and it was right after we played an in. I went ahead and I started attaching tools, and his point again was just about the order of operations. We want to play the trainer's mail first there. Uh, if we were going to play it, we'd play the max elixir first as well, just so that we remove some uncertainty about what our options are going to be. Very, very valid. Uh, and I think I might have noted in the video that I thought I was making some mistakes about the order that I was playing things. Um, and here, I'm not even sure if playing the Max Elixir was was the right play. Um, but he noted that if you're going to play it, you do want to attach it. Um, and he said the thing to do is to go ahead, grab it, attach it to Shaman. Since we have another Shaman in hand, uh, we can play Shaman down. And then eventually we'll ninja boy the shaman on the bench that has energy on it into another Xerneas so that he's partially set up. Two minute. And so the next spot, uh, after I had taken a knockout with one Xerneas, I promoted the next Xerneas. He just noted that with the free retreat, uh, pretty much always want to promote Jolteon. Um, and that failing, promote something with a bloodstone on it because we can then, uh, if something changes in our hand, we can always adjust. It wouldn't have mattered in this case. What really hurt us, obviously, was the mistake I made in acting too fast and attaching to the wrong uh, Pokemon. But And here I debated about whether or not to play the special charge to just recover one energy. Um, Seagro said that he would go ahead and play it uh, because... We really only need to find one more DCE. If we get one energy out, we're taking a KO, and that gets us down to two prizes. So just having one more will win us the game. So he would go ahead and throw it out there. We don't need to conserve it, hoping to, to get maximum benefit from it. Okay, so here, going into our first turn, we just played an N, and he had some comments to make. So we played a Xerneas down, and then I played a Max Elixir, and um, I think I benched the Beedrill. We're going to pause it. Well, okay. We'll get the Ultra Ball off the screen. Okay, we pause it here. Uh, and his point was, really, we want to uh, do things differently right at this spot. And really, I think before we played the Elixir, right? So we played the Elixir. We got the energy. That's great. It worked. But if we... Instead of playing the Elixir, pretend that's still over in our hand, right? We Ultra Ball, we get rid of Beedrill, and we get rid of this energy. Okay? Then we grab Hoopa, right? And we set up the rest of our board state. We can do that because we grabbed Hoopa. We also play the Super Rod to get Beedrill and the energy back into our deck. Probably do that before we bench the Hoopa. Well, then we can play the Max Elixir. We added one energy back into our deck to increase the chances that the Elixir hits. Um, we'll have Hoopa out, so we'll then be able to get a Shaman. And then we can, not like off of Hoopa, one of the cards we'd grab is Shaman. Another would be a Volcanion. And then we can probably get another energy, or even possibly a DCE, off of the Hoopa-Shaman combo. So that would have been a, a better play here for sure. I ended up just benching Beedrill, and then uh, I don't. Th I think I might have ultra balled the Super Rod and the Energy away. So doing it with Beedrill, ultra balling him away, we increased the chances of the Elixir hitting. We also would have 
held on to that energy instead of ending up with it kind of stuck in the discard. That clearly would have been an improvement. I think I noted last time, but one of the difficulties I've had with this deck is feeling like I run out of resources, and I think it's little plays like this that could improve those results. So the The next point that we have is uh, here at the end of our first turn in game two. Uh, I choose to just kind of hold our hand here. I had quickly done the math and thought, well, uh, Jolteon can tank a hit from Zygarde uh, for the first turn because it's going to be 20, which with weakness is 40. Um, we are avoiding plating a stadium because uh, so, that would boost Zygarde's damage up to uh, by another 30, so 50, which hits Jolteon for 100. Um, so I'm thinking, okay, he's probably going to hit us for 100. Uh, hopefully he'll hit us for 40, but he may hit us for you know 100. Um, but we're okay. What I failed to realize, what I failed to think about, was the damage boosts that Zygarde decks tend to play. Uh, so there's strong energy to take into account, there's Fighting Fury Belt, there's Regirock, which isn't always in play, but I think if it's going to be played, a Zygarde deck is where you'll see it. Um, but all of that boosts Zygarde's damage so that he was able to hit that 80 uh, with one energy attachment. And he did take the KO on Jolteon. Um, Seagrove's point, and I think it was a good one, was that he would have done things very differently here. So <laughs> he noted that uh, since we do have a special charge in the deck to recover DCEs, he would actually have gone ahead and retreated Jolteon with his weakness into Genesect. And then he's planning on retreating Genesect uh, to get Xerneas out on the next turn. So we do that. Uh, then he said he would go ahead and play the stadium uh, so that he can then bench Umbreon and Volcanion. Uh, we do that. And he didn't note specifically, but part of me says if we're doing all that, we probably go ahead and play the Max Elixir as well. Um, to try to power up Xerneas as well, so that he just needs one more attachment to attack. And uh, so that's that. Like I said, totally different than what I did, which was to just attach. So like I said, totally different than what I did, which was to just go ahead and click done, thinking, oh, we'll have a big turn next turn. Okay, his next point was here when I play this Ultra Ball. Um, I choose to discard the Via Seeker and the Energy, and he noted that really the better play is to discard uh, Lily and instead to play the, uh, well, to hold the Via Seeker for later, and then potentially we may be getting Lily back with the Seeker, or he might have gotten, you know, Sycamore or some other supporter, or just held it till next hand. Um, I think this is coming from what I started doing in Volcanion, which was discarding the Seekers early on with Ultra Balls. Um, I sort of adjusted too much in that regard, because, yeah, in Volcanion, a VS Seeker with no other supporters or anything else in hand, is a dead card. Anytime you have a supporter, though, um, via Seeker is is less dead than the supporter because you could always potentially draw things that change whether or not you want to get um, a supporter, like whether or not you want to play. Like something could happen that would lead us to a different supporter to play instead of Lily or not. But having our options open to adjust for the game is definitely better. He noted too, with the Ultra Ball, um, I grabbed a Hoopa to you know, stick more stuff on our bench. He said I should have just grabbed a Xerneas, uh, play it, and then play whatever supporter I get with a VS Seeker. Lily, Sycamore, whatever. Um, the idea being 
that we're furthering our setup for attack as well. Yeah, we don't get quite as many Pokemon out. We're not going to hit quite as hard. But we're furthering our setup, and that, in a lot of cases, is more important. Um, and we still are going to have more cards to come off of a supporter to allow us to continue that much further. So I think I think that's a good point. I think one of the mistakes I have continued to make with this deck is not properly uh, setting up my second attacker. It's something I'm trying to improve at, but uh, that's something if you don't if you don't have a backup ready to go, the Xerneas is do go down, you know, they they usually go down fighting and take something else out, but they they go down, they only have 120 to 160 hit points. Um, it's, it's beefy, but it's certainly not indestructible. And then his last point was here at the end. I chose to discard a Vulcanian, a Shaman, and a Hoopa. Uh, because we had another Volcanian in the deck that we could Ultra Ball for, and, and he basically just screamed that that was horrible. <laughs> um, the reason it's bad is that obviously we get that damage boost from Volcanian, uh, so he said he would have discarded another Shaman. Uh, Shaman is certainly the weakest Pokemon we have there, so that, that can hurt us. Um, and obviously the damage boost is good. We can get we can get another type. It doesn't have. We don't have to strictly be scared of repeats. And a Volcanian is sort of our last choice to discard. So I I see his point there, and I I agree that was a mistake. So to me, the quick takeaway. So to me, the quick takeaway from all of that is that we want to really pay attention to the order we're playing things, uh, make sure that we're doing any random things first, which is something we, we learned in Volcanian, but apparently didn't learn it very well. Um, and then second thing is to be more willing and open to do Ninja Boy plays um, if, if they're going to help us out. And then I guess the third thing we, we definitely want to make sure that we're never uh, limiting ourselves in the wrong ways. We need to pay attention to uh, recovery more. Um, don't do things like dropping the Volcanian. Don't do things like discarding energy that you could retrieve in a way that lets you not retrieve it. Um, but yeah, with that, we'll go ahead and get some more matches underway for today. Okay, so we are going second in this match. We'll see what we're dealing with. Okay, so we get to choose what to lead, but really there's only one choice, Xerneas, and we'll pretty much straight away attach the Fighting Fury Belt, I think, assuming we don't get in on this first turn. Uh, our opponent is playing Greninja. Okay. And straight away, we get end. Okay, well, we had a great starting hand, but that's okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, deal with this as we may. Um, okay, so we've got the energy here that we could attach to the active. Um, I think we're going to have to do that. We're going to go ahead, bench the Volcanian. And we don't want to play the Max Elixir yet. We will probably play it onto a Shaman. Um, but I think we want to attach to get more draw from Shaman. So we'll go ahead and attach here. Uh, and then bench the Shaman to draw two cards. And really we're expecting to Ninja Boy that Shaman away at some point. Um, so we'll go ahead and Max Elixir and miss and okay so we don't have a supporter um, if we bench Hoopa we could grab at most one other Pokemon then bench another Shaman I 
guess we'll do that because we don't have much of anything going on here. Uh, so yes, we'll go ahead and grab, I guess we'll grab a Jol Jolteon because we don't have anything that gives us free retreat. Uh, we've already got our Volcanion out and uh, we aren't going to need to, uh, we aren't going to need to have Skyfield this game. If we just are able to do one Ninja Boy play with one of these Shaman, uh, we can one-shot anything he plays. Okay, we got an in here, but we have the DC in hand, uh, so I think I'm just going to pass at this point. And if we can play the DCE next turn, great. We'll be able to take out one of his Frogadiers, because he is almost certainly evolving up to Frogadier and playing his Water Duplicates attack. Um... Faded Town isn't going to matter us. We clearly are not playing any Megas. So we will be able to go ahead. So we could take out this Frogadier. It has energy on it. Um, well, first things first, we want to attach. We have to debate whether we want to make that play or if we want to more permanently take out a Frogadier. Because with his special energy here, the Splash Energy is going to return the Frogadier to his hand. Um, so Greninja is going to come in at most he can hit for 80 uh, but I think I don't think we want to play last year because I think we need to start working on getting another Xerneas up so we'll go ahead and hit in and just see what we can draw off of it and we, hit, we do hit a Xerneas um, I was more kind of hoping we'd end up seeing a Ninja Boy uh, or a Skyfield. We do have the Xerneas, so that's something, but not quite enough. We'll go ahead and take one prize card. And I really I should have checked the deck when we played Hoop, but that's, I'm already making mistakes. Okay, we get another Volcanion. Uh, that's unfortunately not going to help us much. We see the Frogadier come back down, and we do see Greninja come up, and he attaches a Bursting Balloon. So now he's going to Lysander the Hoopa and hit Hoopa for 80. Okay. So what do we get? We get a Sycamore. Um, I think we're going to, we either need to end or we need to Sycamore. Uh, so if we're going to attach energy to something that's out currently, it probably needs to be a Shaman. Um, and then we would end. I think that's going to be our play. I guess we could attach... So if we get a DCE, we do play a special charge. If we get a DCE, we'd be able to retreat Hoopa. Um, so I guess we'll do that. I don't want... Well, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to play Ultra Ball. We're going to discard the Xerneas and the Energy. And we're not going to draw anything... We're just going to click done. Um, I'm trying to decide if we want Volcanion or if Volcanion is just a dead card because we're not going to play this Volcanion. Uh, but I think I think we, we go ahead and let our second Volcanion uh, stay in our discards. So we're retrieving Xerneas and the energy and then we're going to play Sycamore uh, to get new cards. Ideally we get a Floatstone here. But that doesn't happen. We do get a sky field, which will help us out a lot. We can ultra ball for, so we could ultra ball for a Xerneas, but I think better than that is going to be to ultra ball for, if we have Hoopa, we have Hoopa in here. Okay, we have all of our Xerneas. We do not see our Xerneas break. Uh, we have no max elixirs are prized. We already used one. Uh, one Skyfield was prized. That's fine. 
we don't really need. Looks like no Sycamores were prized. Um, one of our DCEs is prized. Uh, okay, so do we need Hoopa? Or should we just get Shaman? Uh, well, if we get Hoopa, we thin our deck out a little bit more. So I guess we'll get Hoopa. And we'll come down. And then off of Hoopa, we will get... So we have five, six, seven. We'll just get Shaman off of Hoopa. We just thinned our deck by one card, but that's okay. Um, so yes. We'll get Shaman. Click done. Uh, and we're hoping that we can... Off of this Shaman... Okay, we still have not attached. Uh, so I am going to attach to... Shaman this time. So we can get four new cards with the Shaman. Again, hoping we'll eventually Ninja Boy. I should have checked to see if Ninja Boy was in our deck. Uh, we do get a Xerneas. Now we wish we hadn't attached a little bit, but you know, what can you do? And we get the Floodstone. So that's helpful. He's going to be able to KO this Xerneas next time. Uh, so we'll have to hope that we can get a DCE and an Elixir. That's a little little dangerous, but um, what can you do? We get a Xerneas break. Uh, unfortunately, that may be too little too late. You see Frogadier on the bench of all up. He plays down another Froki. Ooh. And he's he doesn't have Frogadier and or Greninja in hand, but he's probably gonna find it. Uh, he does have to get rid of one Greninja break, but he's getting it all back. So we're gonna have to get a little bit lucky off of the Sycamore. Uh, he's gonna knock out that Xerneas and hold on to the energy. And we're going to promote Jolteon for now. We'll see what comes down. We get another Xerneas. Okay, so we will bench this Xerneas. We will go ahead and break Evolve here. I don't I think that we can really attach this energy because we're not going to be able to, nin to ninja boy the shaman um, unless we just want to let him unless we can just tank a hit so he's probably going to be able to get Greninja break out on the next turn if we don't take a KO here. Uh, that's going to allow him to do 60 plus 80, 140 damage. Um, Jolteon can withstand that. I'm almost inclined to say we just tank a hit. So If he has Lysander as well, uh, he would be able to KO Hoopa. But that's not that big a deal. Okay, we do come across the DCE. Um, we have one DCE in the discard. So I think that we just accept that and move on. Um, since we did break Evolve, we'll be able to withstand anything he does here as well. So I think we just pass at this point and then we will take a KO on presumably a Greninja break this turn and he's going to get it back into his hand uh, alright so we can get rid of the damaged Hoopa we can get rid of one of our shamans and let's check our damage real quick so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six types with five cards. So I think we discard 
another shaman. My question is whether we discard the one with energy or not. I guess we keep the energy on. Uh, we can always make a play from that. So we'll be hitting for 180. And he has not evolved to Greninja yet, which means that he will not actually be able to KO Xerneas Break next turn either, which is kind of huge for us. He's playing a switch. We have Lysander in hand, so that works out very well for us. Um, we can play a Skyfield. I don't think we need to. So we are going to attach the DCE and retreat into Xerneas Break and then Lysander up the Greninja Break. Um, I'm debating whether or not it's worth it to play Skyfield now. It gets one card out of our hand. I guess we'll do it just for that reason. Um, we're not going to bench anything yet. We will take the KO. Uh, he'll be able to evolve to Greninja, but we'll take another KO if he attacks us at all, which will prevent him from, from reaching his break. He should be out of splash energy at this point. Usually Greninja only plays two splash energy, so that should be good for us. He's probably going to make a... Oh, nope, he's going to end. Okay. We're fine with that. Um, him playing in wouldn't hurt us. Dive ball for a Greninja? No, a Froakie. Okay. Um, that seems a little strange to me. I would have thought he would have uh, wanted to get a Greninja to potentially get a break next turn. But, you know, it certainly works out better for us if he doesn't. Okay, so he again uh, reaches back into Froakie. All right, we're going to play the Max Elixir. Let's see if we hit. We do. Uh, so we'll attach it to this Xerneas. And then I think we manually attach to that Xerneas as well. Uh, we can't count on the Ninja Boy play happening, is basically what I'm concluding. So, uh, if we. He's going to get a KO next turn if he can get a break. We don't know if he hit a break card or not. Um, I'm tempted now to play this. I'm tempted to still hold it because we only have the one DC in. I think we had one prized. So, I think I'm going to hold it. Uh, Go down to two prizes, and we draw our next DC. So that's that's very good for us. And we'll see if he finds his Greninja break. If he does, he'll take a KO this turn. Uh, but unless he is also able to play an in, we will not have a problem doing a return KO. Uh, bursting balloon, so he's. Does he not have an energy to attack with? Uh, he's going to play an N, isn't he? No, last energy. Okay, so his. Wow, he has a completely dead hand. Um, that's nice for us. So we will immediately play the special charge and we draw something more meaningful. Okay. Um, I actually think I want to hold the Max Elixir. I'm not sure how many energies we have left in our deck, but we will definitely play the Special Charge, get two DCEs back. We only have one Xerneas left in our deck as well, which is a little bit painful. Um, I 
I should have promoted the Jolteon there. Because this might actually be a time... Well, if we don't take a KO on Xerneas, he will KO us. So, uh, I guess we go ahead and bench Umbreon so that we can take the KO. I really should have promoted Jolteon. That was a big mistake. Um, but we have to attach. We could max Elixir onto Shaman. Again, still hoping we can hit Ninja Boy eventually. Also, setting up for the follow through next turn. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I. I, I really wish we had promoted Jolteon because that enables us to do so much more. Um, I guess we just go for it. So our only issue is that we need. Well, there's Ninja Boy. Now again, we wish this time we know to promote Jolteon. Um, we can try to max elixir. We may very well get a um, a DC off of our draw. We can hope for that. We get a sycamore. That doesn't help as much. So our options are to Ninja Boy Shaman into Xerneas. In which case we lose out on Sycamore. How many VS Seekers? We have two VS Seekers left in the deck. Unless one of them is prized. So we can we can play the Max Elixir. I think we have to. Okay, we'll play the Max Elixir. We'll see if we hit. We don't hit. Okay. So our only real shot of continuing this hand is if we Sycamore. So we'll Sycamore. Um, we can always Ninja Boy later. And goodness. Goodness. Okay. Well, we definitely want to max or to Super Rod and go for one Xerneas or two. Uh, do, do, do. How many energies down here? Only four energies. I think we do two Xerneas and one energy at this point. Um, yeah. I think we do that. If he's able to in, he will do so. I'm, what I'm thinking we're going to do this turn now is attach a fairy energy to Shaman and do a sky return play. Um, that removes our lowest HP Pokemon from play. He's not going to be able to take a KO after this. We'll hold the float stone so that whichever, if he lies under something, we'll be able to retreat it. We'll hold the max elixir and hope that we get enough off of Shaman to finish this out. Sky return for 30. And we'll promote Jolteon again. So he plays a Sycamore. Gets the Greninja break. Let's to decide how he's distributing his 140 damage. Probably all onto Jolteon, so that if we retreat, he can then water Shuriken. Oh, no. Does he... Is he hoping, I guess, to Lysander? Hmm. I would have thought that he would have wanted to guarantee that Jolteon would be down. We get to heal both of the Pokemon he attacked, which is nice. Um, okay. Ironically, we have too many cards now. 
So we can attach Fighting Fury Belt to Jolteon. We can attach a Floatstone to Volcanion. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We still have too many cards to even do anything. Um, so we don't need all these DCEs. So I think we're going to attach one of them to Hoopa, so that Hoopa has a retreat. I don't really want to play the Max Elixir. I'd like to keep it, because um, we're now get, looking at two turns before we're able to even uh, get our Greninja out, or sorry, get our Xerneas out attacking, and that's if we get him off of Shaman. But at the same time, Maybe it's necessary. So I guess we'll play the Max Elixir, hoping, you know, not caring whether it hits or not. It does not hit, which is kind of preferable, in my opinion. And then, okay, so if we, if we bench Shaman, he can only take a KO if he has a Lysander. So we bench Shaman, draw two more cards. Hope one of them is Xerneas. One of them is. We have not played a supporter yet this turn. Uh, we could Ninja Boy Shaman into something beefier. I think that's what we're going to do. Because we clearly do not want to A, leave Shaman out, and B, we don't want to, yeah, we don't want to leave Shaman there, and we don't want to Sycamore or in, so we will Ninja Boy, and see what we can turn Shaman into. Goodbye, Shaman. Um, so we could do another Xerneas, or Beedrill, or Genesect. Um, the only thing that we... I think I think we do Xerneas. So that he, we have two potential attackers. Um, if he sends a shuriken onto one of them, we can power up the other one. We're not going to leave Jolteon in the active this time. We're not going to promote uh, Volcanion because that's the one Pokemon he could KO. And uh, we'll attach energy to Xerneas. We have 10 cards left in deck. I think we save the Lily in case he is able to in. Because um, that would just be bad for us if he were able to in. Um, I think we're going to retreat into Hoopa. Or we could retreat into... No, because the Xerneas isn't able to retreat. So I think we retreat into Hoopa. And then just pass. And the next turn we can attach a Fairy Energy and win the game. Water Shuriken onto that Xerneas. So now we're going to have to hope that we uh, draw into a Pokemon. But as long as he doesn't in, that shouldn't be that big a problem. He's getting another Froakie out. That is meaningless. We'd we'd rather he retreat into Froakie at this point because we have to we have to fight. So is he gonna Lysander? Hmm. Is he gonna he's gonna Lysander Umbreon? We do have one more floatstone left in the deck. And a shaman. Uh, Alright, we'll heal Jolteon. We'll play the sky field. We will 
attach the energy and then play Lily hoping we can get floatstone um, we'll bench everything basically looking for that floatstone get the VS seeker that's not gonna help us um, this is really going to be the last card in our deck. Shaman can get us there. We don't. We didn't lose it, did we? Oh, we did lose it. Oh no. Okay, so the floatstone is not there. We're going to lose the game. When did we lose that floatstone? Totally, totally missed. I guess it was attached to the hoopoe that we had to discard. Okay, so is there anything else in our deck that can allow a round to retreat? I don't think there is. He's going to be able to KO Umbreon, so we're not worried about decking out at this point. Only thing left on our deck now is another Xerneas. He's going to get the KO, though. Okay, well, we have to pass. Obviously a very close game. Uh, I'm curious what we could have done different. He gets the Water Shuriken. Uh, and gets the KO. And with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up the video. Uh, I know we've already gone pretty long here, so I want to end here, not stretch it out with another match. But uh, I do think it's valuable to have the recaps, but I think that leading off with them for the first half of the video might be too much. Uh, so I may, I'll come up with a different solution. Maybe we do Monday, Wednesday videos, our matches, and then Friday is a recap of the mistakes, um, or I'll figure something out that uh, that works well. But I guess for today, we basically have the recap from last week, and then we have the match with Greninja. I'll be back with uh, more on Wednesday.